I want to tell you a story about a boy named Tyler. Tyler lives in Tacoma, Washington. For many years, his family didn't know where their next meal would come from as they moved from shelter to shelter. Now, the Tacoma Housing Authority has provided them with a place to live. Tyler is short and stocky with spiky blonde hair. He walks like he's carrying a tank with him, seeming much stronger and stodgier and stockier than he actually is with his shoulders hunched forward like he's carrying the weight of the world. For Tyler, learning is difficult. He has trouble paying attention. He got kicked out of kindergarten for distracting the other students. School officials contacted his father several times every week to report behavior problems. So when his father enrolled him in a special spring break camp led by the local PBS station, where he would be surrounded with learning media, everyone was concerned. They worried that he would distract the other students and the teacher, and they doubted that he would make any gains. But they were wrong about Tyler. The games sparked his imagination. For the first time, he was excited, engaged, and having fun. He sat up straight. He started asking questions. The games allowed Tyler to find the learner hiding deep within. And when he went back to school, he had a whole new attitude. By the end of the year, he was given the Outstanding Student Award an extraordinary accomplishment that nobody would have thought possible when he started that camp, including the director. On the last day of camp, the director pulled his father aside to tell him about the transformation that she had witnessed. Tyler's dad started crying. He said, nobody has ever told me that Tyler was good at anything before. Now, every time I tell that story, I get (laughs) verklempt. It's a Yiddish expression, but it's a universal emotion, and all parents feel this when their children make them proud. All parents want their children to have the opportunity to be everything they can be. And I think this story demonstrates two important concepts for unlocking children's potential. One, it illustrates the transformative power of media. Games broke through to Tyler when nothing else clicked. They unlocked the door to his learning and sparked something within him. Two, it shows the importance of active parenting. If Tyler's dad had not taken an active role in his education, none of this would have been possible. Tyler's dad brought him to camp, he encouraged him to play, and he never stopped believing in his son's potential, even when everyone else doubted his abilities. The combination of powerful media and active parenting made it all possible. And it is at this intersection where we have the greatest opportunity to change the lives of children across the country and open worlds of possibilities for their future. What amazes me is that even though we know that media can teach and we know that parents' involvement in their children's education is the single greatest contributor to their success, we're just starting to figure out how to use these strengths together. Let me give you an example of what I mean. In the summer of 2012, the education researcher West Ed conducted a study with low-income parents and their preschool children. The study was funded by the Department of Education's Ready to Learn grant. The study tested two things, whether using PBS Kids Media at home could increase children's math skills, and if the parents' involvement and contribution to their children's learning might increase as a result. So over the course of eight weeks, the children played digital games featuring their favorite PBS Kids characters, characters like Curious George and the Cat in the Hat, and the parents participated in meetings where they learned about simple at-home activities they could do to boost their children's learning. The children and the parents played games together for 30 minutes a day, and that took place four days a week. A very small time commitment that led to very big results. 
Not only did the children show significant math gains, but the parents reported feeling more involved and invested in their children's learning. The parents said that by engaging with media together, they were able to understand how their children were learning. And because of this, they were excited to continue the learning at home, seeking connections between the games the children were playing and the math in the PBS Kids games and the math in the real world. In short, the games were a game changer, opening worlds of possibility for both the parents and the teacher, helping them to find common ground and shared experiences around learning. So why does this matter? Well, let's go back to Tyler for a minute. Remember, games broke through to him when nothing else could. So what if we could take that idea to the next level? Imagine if we could observe Tyler playing games. What if we could see which character spoke to him the most? And what if we understood how he liked to play? What kinds of games he gravitated towards? Were they narrative games? Were they problem-solving games? Maybe they were the kinds of games where you have to get up and physically move your body to play. What if we knew which skills he was mastering, which skills needed work, and where the greatest opportunities for learning might be? Imagine if we could find out how Tyler learned best. Well, we could take all that data and we could build a customized learning program just for him, leveraging what works and building support where needed. Now, what if we could bring Tyler's dad in on this? What if we could show him the learning patterns of his son and we could make connections between how his child was using media and the kinds of activities they could do at home to reinforce learning? Well, we wouldn't just be unlocking the door to Tyler's learning, we'd be blowing it wide open. We wouldn't just be lighting a spark, we'd be igniting a fire. This vision has been driving our work at PBS for a long time, and we're about to make it a reality. Soon, we will release a media experience that brings parents in on their children's learning in a way that's never been possible before. Parents will be able to see how their children use media and what they're learning. They'll get insight into what kinds of thinkers their children are. And they'll get tips for transitioning from screen time learning to real world experiences that they can share. This is the next frontier of media. Creating experiences that not only teach and engage kids, but invite their parents to participate and encourage them to find ways to build on that learning together. Now, I said it's a new frontier, but in reality, the pioneers of public broadcasting were in on that idea from the very beginning. Joan Gans Cooney, the co-founder of Sesame Street, saw the potential of TV when nobody else did. At a time when TV was considered uh, just a boob tube, Joan saw that she could leverage its potential for learning and use it as a tool to open up possibilities for children. She teamed up with Jim Henson, the visionary behind the Muppets, and together they hit on a revolutionary idea. If we could create characters and stories and learning moments that are designed for kids, but that adults love too, well then, parents and kids would watch together, they'd laugh together, and they'd share those learning moments together. Today, we know that they were right. Research shows that children actually learn more if their parents are viewing with them. Another PBS pioneer, Mr. Rogers, knew that TV could deliver a powerful message to children, that they're special, worthwhile, and brimming with all the potential in the world. And he knew if he could engage their parents, that message would resonate all the more. So in a series of TV specials for parents, he encouraged them to talk to their children, and above all, to listen to what their children had to say. Now, if their kids had trouble putting their feelings into words, Mr. Rogers reminded them that games are the way children talk to us he could have never imagined how much children's gameplay would change between then and now. When Mr. Rogers said that, 
There were no smartphones, no tablets, there were no Xboxes, and no Angry Birds. But what he said is true today. How children play tells us a lot about who they are, how they learn, and what they need. So if we could use technology to help parents see their children's play patterns and better understand how they learn, and if we can use technology to give parents simple activities they can do at home to build on that learning, well, if we could do all that, we could start a parenting revolution. I have one more story for you. This one is personal. When my daughter, Danny was eight months old, one of the games she liked to play was stacking cups. We would sit on the beach for hours, and Danny would fill her cups with sand and water and stack them over and over and over again. And to be honest, I didn't think anything of it. In fact, I practically forgot about it until just a few years ago when she got to high school. Suddenly, Danny, who was an attentive and accomplished student right up until 10th grade, was struggling. Her grades were falling, and her frustration was growing. <coughs> I knew it wasn't for lack of trying. Something wasn't clicking, and it was standing in the way of her progress. As her mom, it was heartbreaking to watch my daughter go through this. I wanted desperately to help her, but I didn't know how. So I took her to be tested. And what I found out made me relieved and angry all at once. Danny is a visual learner. Her spatial relation skills, they're off the charts. Well, I was relieved because now that I understood how she learned, I could find a way to help her. But I was angry because the answer had been there all along. I remember Danny stacking her cups at the beach. And it dawned on me that her play pattern, even at such a young age, was telling me something important. But I didn't know what it was, and I didn't know what to do about it. So when the team at PBS showed me a prototype that could help parents to see their children's play in a new way and give them ways to build on that at home, I was thrilled. I could feel the transformative power of media, and I could feel the relief of millions of parents just like me who love their children, who want the best for them, but who feel hopelessly outside of their learning. And I realized that this is the tip of the iceberg. We are on the cusp of technology that will allow us to see even more. We'll be able to see not only what our children are learning, but how they're learning and how their parents can best support them so that they have the opportunity to be everything they can be somewhere at the intersection between media that can engage kids and teach kids and active parenting is an intersection where we have the opportunity to build worlds of possibility for all children. And the key to that door is just within our reach. Thank you. <laughs>